look. I love an awesome snare drum and a perfect vocal reverb just as much, if not way more than the next guy. But the simple reality is that if you're mixing for a church, the vast majority of people there are really just there to hear the pastor preach the message. That means the most important input you have is likely a very difficult to work with headset mic. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use EQ and compression to dial in a headset mic and also give you some tips and tricks to prevent feedback. First, let's just jump in and take a listen to what the raw input sounds like with no processing whatsoever. And that's right, what we're going to so start today. Before I do that, raw, I want to tell a story about a guy who console, I would no literally say happening might be one of my heroes. So the first thing we're going to uh, do is a high-pass Back in 2014, there was a guy like named Danny Foley, a college student, 140. that kind of... The reasoning for that is nothing all that special. It's really just a place that I found that is a good baseline, where I'm not cutting way too much low end out so that the voice doesn't have any body to it, but... I'm also getting rid of enough so that plosives, which are those popping sounds, don't end up being too crazy. After that, we're gonna move on to EQ. The main thing we're looking for with EQ here is simply to get rid of resonances. We're going for a very natural sound, and so there isn't any special tricks or anything. It's literally just find the areas that resonate and cut those until it sounds natural. Real quick, as I was editing, I realized there's a couple things that I needed to say. First of all, what I'm about to demonstrate is an exaggerated version of what you would do. I'm gonna be taking these bad frequencies and boosting them a ton. Do not do that in a live room with PA. If you do that in a room with someone actually speaking with a mic, you will generate feedback. I was just doing it that way to exaggerate what you'd be hearing so that you can understand it better on less ideal speakers. Also to be clear, if this is live and there are people in the room, don't boost bad frequencies. Just try to use the same idea to try to hear where things are resonating and just make slow movements of cuts until you eventually find what's resonating. The process is basically identical on any console, so don't feel like you need to worry if things look slightly different on your console. All right, back to the video. White shirt and an orange tie. And he knew that his family was going to go to the championship game. And so that Sunday morning when they woke up and they were driving to Greensboro, North Carolina for the ACC championship game where Virginia was going to play Duke against legendary Coach K, Danny had an idea and Danny had a plan. On his way to the stadium, on the way to the arena, he stops at Walmart and he buys himself a University of Virginia coaching ensemble. And he buys a cheap navy blue suit, a white shirt, in an orange tie. And he had this idea that he was gonna go into the arena and he was gonna find himself on the bench with the University of Virginia staff. Lo and behold, he gets to the arena and they all buy $30 cheap nosebleed seats and that's where his family sat. He just wanted to get into the arena. And as he tells a story to many media outlets that came after him after this happened, he says, during a TV timeout in the second half, I knew I had to make my move. So he walks right down the stairs. This exact right same process the is the same way that you prevent feedback. The... All that feedback really is at the end of the day is frequencies resonating too much. So as long as we get rid of things that are resonating overwhelmingly, you really shouldn't have any feedback problems. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is compression. For compression, I like to do a four to one ratio, an attack of somewhere between seven and 13 milliseconds. We're gonna do 13 for today and then a release somewhere between probably 200 and 350. We're gonna do about 275 today. The attack controls how much transient you're letting through the vocal, so how much of that attacky bit of the vocal that you let through. The lower that number, the less of it comes through. The bigger that number, the more of it you let through. I find that typically seven to 13 sounds natural, and I really try to stay on that 13 as much as possible. When it comes to release, you're basically controlling how far away that vocal sounds. A lot of you probably just immediately went, oh great, well then I'll just do the fastest release possible and then everything will sound really close and good like I've been wanting. But most of the time that's not actually what you want. As I mentioned, somewhere in that 200 to 350 range is where I found to be best, primarily because having a little bit longer release prevents a lot of feedback issues. You basically give the microphone time to ring out in the room before it is effectively turning the microphone back up by releasing that compression. I'm typically aiming for about 6 dB of compression, but this is definitely gonna vary, so don't worry too much about that. I also like to use the output gain after all that to just compensate for however much I compress, so I'm gonna end up adding about 6 dB to that. Here's what that actually looks like. Handshake line, and the first hand that he shakes is Coach K. 
And then he runs over with everybody else to the University of Virginia managers passing out shirts, championship shirts and championship hats. And there's photos of him wearing a championship shirt over his cheap Walmart suit, smiling with the ACC trophy. If you stick to these simple guidelines, you really should be able to get something that sounds great. It's not about fancy plugins. It's about the fundamentals. This video was pretty short, so check out this video if you're interested in learning how attack and release work on a compressor. I demonstrate with piano how attack and release can make something feel really close or really far away, and learning this concept can really open a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to mixing.